Wow. Dry land is not a myth. I've seen it. Kevin Costner, Waterworld. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel where I talk and do everything pinball. So if that sounds interesting to you then hit that subscribe button down below. Once again another pinball machine that far surpasses the movie and here I am with one and I'm going to show you how to disassemble this thing for just a basic shopping. We're not taking it down to the bare bones of nothing because this pin is going on location. I don't need it to be extravagantly beautiful, every nook and cranny done. I just need it to play well and look pleasing to the eye, which is what it's going to be. All right, so I've started the disassembly process for this Godly Water World. And what I typically do, depending on the machine, is of course you have a couple of options when you're tearing out a play field with the play field still in the machine. And that is either you can start from the top and work your way down, or you can stop from the bottom of the play field and work your way up. I'm gonna do a mix and match of both. So essentially I've started at the bottom and I was gonna be cleaning up all down here inside the trough area, but this trough area is surprisingly pretty damn clean. All the mechs down here are clean, no rust or dirt and gunk, anything on that. These links and chains look, you know, fairly new and active and stuff. So I'm going to assume that something's been done down here fairly recently to where this stuff actually looks pretty damn good. I mean, I was surprised. Uh, moving on up to right here. I've taken, oh my God, that's already pretty wobbly right there. Uh, I've taken off the flippers and the out the uh, inlaying plastic areas right here. Um, but then you get to the part where wire ramps or worm rails or wire forms are essentially bound to certain areas. And so that's when I'm gonna basically typically start building from, or unbuilding or destroying or disassembling, whatever you wanna call it, from the top down. Because a lot of the stuff that from the top is attached to the stuff below it. So working your way up one direction is not necessarily the only slash best way of doing this. So now I'm gonna start working from the top down. And what am I doing with my parts after I take them off? There are different ways you can do this. I'm actually not doing this the way that I typically do. I'm just gonna be taking these parts out and I'm going to be creating another pinball machine essentially over here on the floor. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but I'm just going to lay it all out right there on the floor for it to uh, just mimic what it looks like right here on the play field. So, all right, let's continue. All right, so what I've done, I've got the play field pulled out enough to where the brackets can hold on to the lockdown bar portion. I'm trying to remove this big old freaking water slide plastic piece right here, and I've noticed that, you know, you have the obvious points where it's connected up here and then you have a little less obvious point that's two bolts that go right down there and you can see them and they're not easy to access even with a long tipped um uh, nut driver so the only way you can access this son of a bitch is by pulling the play field up And then kind of moving it over a little bit. And this is just by myself. So this is where it becomes really fun. Then you can get those two bolts out. And then you can lift this damn plastic piece out of here and be gone with it for right now. So yeah. There's your little tip. Alright, beginning the disassembly of up here by the D's. As well as back here near the motor that controls it. So what I typically do whenever I'm disassembling is if I'm able to keep the hardware on where I've unscrewed something. For instance, right here, this the plastic was above this. So I'm just gonna keep the, the nut and washer actually right here still on the mechanism. That way I don't lose it. There's just less things that I have to keep track of. I can already tell that I'm not gonna enjoy this teardown. Um, 
because it's a it's always a maze the first time you take a machine apart that you're unfamiliar with and i really am unfamiliar with this machine so we're going to be just looking for the weak spots of where i can start taking things apart because i really need to get this d's out of here it looks like my best bet is to start from the motor and then uh i'm hoping that this might just slide right out of this damn thing and that'll be one nice little piece to get out of here so let's go all right so <laughs> figured out how to get this damn boat out of here and that is by removing the two bolts that were down here holding this motor down and once again lifting the play field up setting it on the side rails right here and that gives me the ability to slide this mofo out with a little finagling and then boom and I'll just set this over here oh, <clears throat> with the rest of that stuff. All right, so upon going further into this disassembly, it has come to my attention that the only way I'm going to be able to get all this stuff off in the back is if I have this play field out of there. So in order to keep it in the machine, though, because I am lacking on space right now with so many projects, I have rigged up just a couple of these C-clamps. It's not even a C-clamp. It's more of a... That is a nylon spring clamp. Harbor Freight, got one on this side, got one on this side. And that is keeping my play field above. And Gottlieb has provided some very good metal brackets right there to hold on to the lockdown bar. So now I should be able to access everything without worrying about the play field falling into the machine and have access to everything. So that's the thing I would do, just let you know. And then you have that portion right there so it's got plenty of slack I'm not stretching any wires all right so next thing I recommend is removing these big ass suckers right here and that's gonna give you a lot more access to everything else uh, I couldn't ha have a good visual of what these things looked like and how they were mounted at the moment but once I got a better view I was able to realize that these things need to come off ASAP so I can remove everything else and so I have a lot more access now all right so this is where i'm at i don't believe i'm going to break this down any more than i already have because i'm able to access every path and area that can be visible to the person's eye and if the ball rolls over it then i'm able to wax that portion now since this is going on location i don't need to do a complete tear down of the entire top of the play field it's not going in my collection or anything so i don't need to have that much scrutiny in this work so but this is where i'm at i've got it all disassembled i've already actually gone over it with some uh, uh, naphtha and a magic eraser to get off all the hard grunge and dirt and stuff like that um now i'm fixing to go over and start getting some of the metal cleaned up a little bit around these rails uh, gonna get these plastics all cleaned off and get them all nice and shiny and then we're gonna start getting the play field all waxed up oh actually you know what skip that I'm about to go change all these damn rubbers I, I forgot got me a bag of rubbers right here thanks to Titan Pinball they have uh, gladly, appreciatively given me a pack for this machine, titanpinball.com. So here I am going to be going around the playfield, just showing you what this machine looks like with the blue rubbers from Titan Pinball. This color goes very well with this game's theme, playfield, and everything. So it's highly recommended that if you plan on doing your water world, I would try out these rubbers just to see what you think about it. You'll get to see the end result, but I guarantee you that it looks very, very pleasing to the eye. Now, I'm not going to be showing the full reassembly process, uh, mainly because I guess I didn't record it, but I will show you, of course, the end result. The D's is back installed on the machine getting a little closer to getting this thing back together uh, I got the little bits of rust bits taken off of this thing with some like 2000 grit sandpaper it's very smooth now so should be no roughness against the uh, pinballs or anything and it looks a lot better too 
So here's the game after the cleaning and new rubbers, but I want to show you the difference that LEDs can make to this game. Now here, the flashers are already been converted over to LED, and I'm telling you with this game, it is too bright. The LED flashers in this game will blind you if you have like the 12 SMDs that you can get from Titan. They are going to be too bright and will mess with your eyes. I strongly recommend getting a basic LED flasher for this or stick with your incandescents. Uh, when it's on location, I've actually got electrical tape just kind of over the uh, flasher bowl uh, plastics just to kind of help with the intensity. Uh, I usually like bright and intense, but I couldn't play this game without my eyes watering because it was hurting so bad. There are so many flashers that go around that play field when you're playing, it just makes it almost unplayable. Now here we are with LEDs in the inserts. So now you're going to see instead of a slow fade off and on with all the inserts, we're showing you how many points and where to go. It's going to be a really quick and bright, basically it's going to look a lot better. I'm, I'm sure you can see the difference here. It looks a lot better. Now here's the game with full LED general illumination white. A bright frosted white is your best bet whenever you're LEDing any machine. I'm essentially like swearing that this is the best motif to go if you want your colors to pop is to go with a frosted like a frosted white is what's going to make the game look closely to what they were wanting the game to look like upon release. So there it is guys, a Gotly Water World completely shopped with new Titan rubbers and LEDs throughout the entire game. This game actually does pretty well on location. It doesn't give me any kind of issues when it comes to mechanical failures. The only issue I've had with this machine on location is the voltage regulator on the display board went out. So replace that and all is well again and the display has never looked better. I wanna know your thoughts on this game. Have you played this game before? Do you own this game? Let me know what your thoughts on this game is in the comments down below. That's gonna wrap up this video guys. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Do not forget to give me that thumbs up and if you haven't already, do not forget to hit that subscribe button down below. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload something for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, peace out.